that might be a little harder as looking back for 10 years. I think around uh, 2012, 2014, we saw the big jobs and the change of paradigm in terms of treatment of CLL. So the first the introduction of the BTK inhibitor, ibrutinib as first in class, and the pi 3 k delta inhibitor, idelalisib as the first in class. And a little later, also introduction of menetoclax, the BCN2 inhibitors in CLL. So we have really got a lot of treatment options and a lot of molecules coming up now. But it's not like we, from year to year, change the full paradigm of treatment of CLL, but we have to go through the systematic testing on diff of different combinations in CLL. We've seen during the last year publication and reports on combining BTK inhibitors and venetoclax, both in the frontline setting and in later line treatments, and also from our Nordic CLL study group together with the Hohen group working on MRD, minimal residual disease guided therapy in the relapse session so, so, uh, setting with venetoclax and ibrutinib in combination and stopping and also reinitiating treatment based on MRD results. So it's a stepwise identification of which approaches, which combinations, at which, freq uh, which sequence or what time point for the patient would actually give the best outcome and the best cost benefit. So it's more this systematic approach, testing the new agents, testing the sequence to use these agents and identifying patients with a personalized approach to treatment of CLL where you can actually identify high-risk patients that would benefit the most from specific treatment. It might be a little controversial, but from my perspective, still patients having IGH-V mutated CLL in need of treatment with low-risk disease, no other high-risk markers, they might actually be cured by chemoimmunotherapy. And the alternative to these patients might be indefinite BTK inhibitor treatment. And we have seen cardiac events and even sudden death in patients on ibrutinib. So again, we might wait the option for cure with six months of chemoimmunotherapy towards the option for significant risks on an indefinite treatment. So obviously we need to test systematically as we do in the moment at the Gaia CLL-13 trial and we will continue to do also in the CLL-17 trial coming up later this year together with the German CLL study group, our Nordic CLL study group, the Hohen group and several other study groups internationally. And we'll continue to systematically test not just what is the commercially most interesting from pharma, pharma uh, companies' perspective, but what we from an academic and from treating physician perspective believe would be the best treatment option for patients. Because obviously we should continue to assess and investigate this and eventually to personalize treatment for individual patients, but in an evidence-based manner. <laughs>